Hello, this is Deborah Matthews, Vicar of Verwood. It's good to be back with you again this week. On the front of our weekly pew sheet for today, there is a picture of figures walking along a road and the heading is Follow the Leader. Being that this is a Christian church, it's not hard to think about who the leader is. Of course, it is Jesus. Jesus is the one that we follow. We look at the way Jesus lived his life and we try to live our lives following in his footsteps in the way of love. And sometimes that means that we too have to live the way that involves sacrifice. One of the followers of Jesus was Saint Paul. His writings are found in the New Testament in the form of letters to the early churches. In the reading from the Bible taken from Paul's second letter, to the church in Corinth, Paul tells the church to reflect upon the way Jesus lived his life and to follow him. And that is one of Paul's messages that we take to our hearts today. Paul writes of Jesus, he was rich, yet for our sake he became poor, so that by his poverty we may become rich. Well, I don't think that Paul was talking about earthly riches, such as money or possessions. He was talking about the way that Jesus gave up his divinity to become human with all of its complications and problems. Jesus never turned back from living the way of love, even when that meant he went to his death to save us. In his life, Jesus demonstrated a life of commitment to God and of love and compassion for all of God's people. And he did not give up on that aspiration, even when that led to him giving up his own life to complete his journey in faith and trust in his Father. When Jesus' first followers in the early church started out on their own journeys of faith, they might have had good intentions of following Jesus by giving themselves and their resources into that lifetime's work. But perhaps as their excitement and interest dwindled, they faced persecution, their commitment may have wavered. Perhaps they looked for an easier path in life and settled for something less onerous or more secure. So Paul tells the church, look to your own lives. And he asks them the question, is there still work that you need to complete? And I guess that that's a question that we can all ask ourselves throughout life. What else do I need to do to fulfil this ministry or this job or this role or this task that I have begun? There may come a moment for us when we ask ourselves how we can keep going when we feel drained and when we feel as though we are drifting and losing sight of our goal and our sense of purpose. But we do have someone to lead us through and in faith and trust in him, we can overcome the times of doubt and darkness. Paul writes, it is appropriate for you who started to do something or even desired to do something to finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. While reading this scripture, I ask myself, is there anything I have started and yet failed to complete? To some extent, I feel that there is so much more to be done each evening when I turn off my computer. But I think we're looking at the bigger picture to our feelings about what we're doing and about how we can persist in our mission to follow Jesus. The challenge to follow him is great, but the support and the comfort and the love that we receive from him on our journey is greater. The New Testament writers often speak about running with endurance, the race that is set before us. Referring to our life's work as a race can give the wrong impression because in a race, the winner is always the first to finish. We are not looking to be first past the post but to make a good job of completing the journey. Paul writes that he does not run aimlessly. We know the goal to which we move 
And it is not just in the successes and the prizes, but to follow Jesus and come home to God. And on the way, when the journey gets tough and the road ahead looks bleak, we can keep our eyes on that goal and remember that we do not walk alone. When Jesus teaches his disciples about ministry, he gives some examples to follow. In the three years of his ministry that are written about in the Gospels, we hear that Jesus gets tired. His long days of teaching the disciples and speaking to the crowds, some of whom are hostile to his words, take their toll. And he needs space to pray and to be refreshed by spending time alone with God. Ministry and life without prayer is much harder to bear and to cope with. Strengthened by prayer, Jesus continued his work and gives us the pattern for our lives. Our journeys will all be different. We will encounter different issues along the way, but we can all put our trust in God as we follow our leader and make our way in life towards completing the same goal. May your journey be filled with love and peace and may you be accompanied by Jesus along the way. Have a great week. God bless.